All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Greetings and welcome to episode 471 of the KISS FAQ podcast. I am your host this week, Marcus Almighty, and this week I am joined by my good friends and fellow podcasters out in California. We have Mr. Uh, 69th Blizzard. Ken, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. And of course we have in St. Louis, Missouri, Mr. Lonnie. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. I didn't had didn't I didn't say your handle because I don't remember what your brave words. Uh, STL sorry, kiss. STL kiss is my name. STL kiss. That's it. kiss. Yeah. I can't believe I <laughs> screwed that up too. Brave words. That's a, that's an old message for me to go on. I meant the FAQ podcast. Still there. Anyways, uh, I'm off to a great start already on this. So let's get going before I screw up even further. Uh, so how's everybody doing? How are you guys doing? Doing good. Hanging yeah. in there. As that's good good as you can expect so julian is not with us this week because he is ransacked with various things that he has to do uh i'm guessing personally and also professionally i hear that there's some aerosmith things that he's uh tending to which is fantastic news for him since i know that he's very interested in getting that side of his book thing going as well so good luck to julian in all his endeavors on that and let's get to talking to some kiss because i know that's what everyone's here for today <laughs> so let's start with some exciting news so, first up in the news, we read that Paul has $20,000 guitars for sale. Isn't that a big surprise? You know, it's, it's always been one of these things that always surprises me. Uh, well, it used to surprise me, let's put it that way, that, you know, not that Paul would sell $20,000 guitars. I'm more surprised that people would actually buy $20,000 guitars. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for me, to own a $2,000 Gibson Les Paul is a big feat, and I'm very proud that I actually have a guitar of that value. And that's nothing to sneeze over, but a $20,000 guitar, and, you know, no offense, people, but they're Ibanez guitars. I don't know any Ibanez guitar that's worth $20,000. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, but people, you know, it's associated to Paul, and I'm sure it has some kind of fancy paint job or something to it, or maybe he signs it or stuff like that. Uh, I'm sure my good esteemed friends, Ken and Lonnie, will probably know more about this than I do. But uh, let's get let's go around the table. And uh, what are your thoughts on this $20,000 guitars? Let's start with Lonnie. Well, are there different levels that you can buy for, for these guitars, or are they only $20,000? I think there's different levels, but uh, I think the most expensive is the, was it the gold. The gold one, yeah. um, and, it I, I, and it's going to be. I think I believe it's going to be stage played. Ooh. Oh, okay. So that's the hidden little on. extra and, and, extra tip. You know, you get charged ten thousand just to play a half a song, you know, or something. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's interesting is that these guitars are everything up to the Madison Square Garden dates. <laughs> We're not even going to tell you how much we're going to charge for those just yet. Well, that oh, might geez. be, yeah. <laughs> add a zero. <laughs> it's um, going to be double yeah, price. Yeah, add a zero. For... Mark, Mark is 100% right. Yeah, so, so I am just, just and, and, and you can go to these and look at these at paulstanley.com and pick your city. And, and yeah, there's a, the gold rhinestone stage mm -hmm. played. And, and you get the strap, though, too, Mark. Ooh, um yes. and, and, and and that one that one's twenty grand. And but there are other ones, um, you know, in the more affordable eleven thousand dollar range and the seventy five hundred dollar <laughs> range. So um there are different there are different price points for these, which is great to see. Um uh, however, you know be, between this and, and some other and the announcement of another date in Australia, which I'm, which we'll get to here in a little bit, you know, it's it's just proving to anybody who had any doubt left in their minds that what we're doing in 2023 is the last big cash grab. Yeah. We're gonna we're, 
I mean, we we are going to squeeze every last dollar we can on these last 50, excuse me, 55 dates. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. It is 54 because one got canceled. (laughs) So we're back to 54. Um, We we are we are really going to squeeze everything we can out of out of out of you. You know, and and at the same time, I'm guilty. I'm going to see him again, you know. And I, I, yeah. I'm not twenty thousand dollars for a guitar guilty, but I am going to go see him again. So, but it, it, if there was any doubt about what, what what we're doing, this is it. We're 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 in it for one last big cash grab yeah. because I don't I don't think these surprises that are being teased are. I don't think we're going to get up on stage and play, take me or or watching you or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. No. no, this is this is very, 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 very well put there, Lonnie. I mean, this is definitely the "We're Robbing You Blind" tour 2023 uh, from the Kiss edition. So, uh, what do you think, Ken? What's what's your opinion on this whole matter? The, uh, you know, I'm with Lonnie on it. Really, um, I think it is somewhat a cash grab based on the prices. Um, if I was, I mean, if I was kiss though i would if you're gonna really cash grab i would put all anything that had uh like all their vinyl albums released i would i would adjust and put the cover on it and have a like a embossed fit in gold embossed 50 50th you know whatever or whatever some kind of anniversary thing and just just sell it <laughs> as a as something to say it's you know the last you know end of the road thing or last 50 shows just and are you, people are you buy talking it. about the records are you talking about the records themselves <clears throat> yeah well yeah the covers like kind of well, how has like 75 the covers yeah yeah 75 on their pressings now <clears throat> yeah put they something to 75 yeah you put something on there like that and you know people are gonna buy it because it's a special edition even though nothing else is different about it right there's time for that yet <clears throat> yeah and, and they may still do <laughs> Something you know what surprises me to no end is that Ken still to this day wants some new vinyl. Even even though there's been vinyl coming no, out now all I'm time, not asking he, for he, that. He though. wants some different vinyl again. The same vinyl record. I want course, different vinyl. But he wants but... one with a 50 emblem now on no, it. To no, no. I don't want the one whole catalog. I don't want to have to spend on it. So I, don't, I really don't want them to, to do that. Uh, what I suggested, but that's if they're really going to do a cash grab, uh, they could do that. But as for the the guitars, yeah, if you can afford it and you have the money to, you know, and you enjoy it, that's that's all good. And, you know, more power to you. That's that's great. Um, you know, yeah, could I do it? I probably could, but that would be a put me in a deep hole kind of thing. More ways than, in more ways than one. Um, and uh but i i just can't pull a trigger on something like that you know especially twenty thousand if even even you know five thousand is really pushing it yeah so that's uh <laughs> that's that that's that's the first bit of news that I'm, that you know we will always start off with a great bit of news like that and that always gets the blood rolling when it comes to this it's sort of uh news bit uh <laughs> but now Today is May 25th, okay? Now, in 1988, a certain album came out at this time uh, called Shikara, as many of you probably remember, uh, or maybe some of you don't remember. Uh, This was a greatest hits record, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. Now, I'm sure if I get this Mm -hmm. wrong, I'll get, you know, pounced on by every member of the KISS army. Uh, This was a Japan-only release, I think it was. Correct. Right? So this is why us in North America didn't have, you know, no hide or hair of it until much later. Uh, but uh, what I do remember from hearing about it, I remember listening once to the uh, the, the podcast for years back, and they, they did a little special on it, on Shikara. And they talked about how fantastic this was as the greatest hits and that it came out at a really mm-hmm. interesting time. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, after Crazy Nights, right? This came out. So... Uh, I guess to kind of, you know, get yeah. KISS fans excited about the old songs again, they released the greatest hits with, you know, older material and, you know, some of the newer stuff as well. So uh, what are your thoughts on the greatest hits? Do you own it? What Do you listen to it all? Let's start with Ken. 
Yeah, and actually, I did buy it when it was first came out. Um, but I did it. I, I think I saw it as an advertisement. Uh, it's kind of an import advertisement. It might have been one of those magazines, uh, rock and roll magazines. I forget where it, it was. Great. Yeah, I saw it and uh, I thought, oh, that looks kind of cool. Um, so I went ahead and and uh, ordered that. Yeah, straight from Japan. And uh, I still have it. Actually, I have two copies. Um, but one copy was later bought because it had uh, Bruce Kulik's uh, signature on it. But, uh, oh, nice. uh, but yeah, the original one, he got it and it came with uh, a Chikara a patch. Well, you know, the symbol, the Chikara yeah, symbol yeah. Uh, patch. I still have that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was, it was good. You know, it, it also, what they did on that is they put the long version of I was made for loving you on there, um, and they had a lot of the '80s uh, stuff on there. You know, the '80s hits. You know, mm-hmm. Heaven's on Fire, whatever. Tears are Lick It Up. I think uh, I don't have the song list in front of me, uh, unless I get the CD back here on the shelf. But uh, yeah, it's it was a pretty good greatest hits at the time up until right Smashes came after you know a few years later, yeah, or yeah. a year later or whatever it was. Yeah, that was interesting that it came pretty quickly after that. What about you, Lonnie? Did you get it? What's your thoughts? I did not. Um, and I and actually, I do not. I still to this day do not own a copy of, of that, which is really surprising or embarrassing. I don't know which. Um, but I'm just sitting here looking at the track listing. And, it, and it's an interesting track list, actually. Um, you know, that it has some of the older songs like Rock and Roll Night in Truck City, Love Gun. But then it really focuses on the 80s more than anything else. With who wants to be lonely uh, all night? Tears are falling, thrills in the night, heavens on fire, all hell's breaking loose. It's really, at least side two is very, even more than just side two is very eighties driven. Um, so it's like they dip their toe in the water a little bit with a re- with a with the greatest hits, just to see if the interest would be out there, and and maybe it was, and mm-hmm. that's why Smat and that's why Smashes came a year later. Um, yeah. Because Smash has sold extremely well when it did come out, you know, and then and that and that triggered a lot of things afterwards. Then obviously, because the next time they go on tour, Hot in the Shade, they start playing some of these older songs that they had ignored for a long time after seeing the success that, that Smash has had, and that people were still interested in the old material that they were basically ignoring for for quite a while. But you know, I, th- I think this was you know them maybe dipping their toe in the water a little bit just to see is there still interest in classic what would what would have been even at the time classic kiss at the time yeah yeah that's sorry go on i was just gonna say the the one thing about it is they had four of the 70s songs right and mm-hmm. the rest of it out of the 14 so and 10 songs were all, all 80s starting from yeah. you know creatures of the night through tears, <laughs> tears are falling um very 80s driven very very 80s all the 80s hits on there so anyway yeah, when when you got up to get the CD, uh, Lonnie mentioned that that it was pretty '80s centric. The CD, and I think you brought up a really good point though, Lonnie, about that because um, a lot of the times what they used to do back in the '80s that I remember, and uh, this was like the thing that I was also I also heard when I was doing my like apprenticeship through like you know the studios and stuff like that is that a lot of the times when a record label's uncertain of how a product is going to do, they'll release it in a market like Japan first and see how it goes. And, and in their eyes, if it doesn't do well in Japan, it ain't going to do well anywhere else kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it probably did well enough and had enough interest, as you mentioned, for them to turn around and say, okay, we can do something like this now in the rest of the territories. And you're 100% right, Lonnie. I mean, that album, Smashes Thrashes, ended up being one of their best-selling records for a very long time. You know? No. Yeah, we, we bag on Smashes for for the remix and, and how, how shitty it sounds in, in a lot of our ears. But that album sold extremely well and was very popular at the time when it came out. I mean, amongst amongst me and my friends and my brother and his friends, you know, everybody had that album. And, you know, and, and they were back on MTV with, with less, we, we bagged on Let's Put the X and Sex and Rock Hard last week. But they were back on MTV with those songs. It's shitty as those videos were it was exposure and you know it, was, it, it showed them that hey there is interest in the in these old songs and you know that's a discussion in, in its own looking at yeah. the, the hot in the shade set list that came a year or two later yeah and i mean 
that was funny too because when that, when that record came out, I know that at least here in Toronto, whenever they would play Kiss stuff, like they would play Rock and Roll Night a lot on our Q107 mm -hmm. here, the station here, but they would play the Smashes Thrashes mix of it. You oh, can yeah. totally tell it sounds totally different, right? But so that was probably another reason why it was so popular because radio started playing a lot of those versions rather than the original versions of these songs. All right, so people are saying, well, what the hell is that? I never heard that version of it. And then, you know, they would hear, oh, it's from Smashes, Thrashes, it's Kiss. So people would go out and buy it. And it, it, like you said, it did really, really well. So, you know, Shakara did do, <clears throat> excuse me, more than a few good things for Kiss in that sense, you know. So, uh, yeah, so it's a well-deserved anniversary look at that. Now, next up, we have a very interesting tweet from Mr. Gene Simmons. So, you know, if it's coming from Gene, you know, it's got to be interesting uh, yeah, it's be one way or another. <laughs> so the tweet goes, November 3rd, Hollywood Bowl. If you can get tickets, be there. We are planning all kinds of surprises. All okay. kinds. All kinds. <laughs> but, but we know that the one surprise will be that neither Peter or Ace will be there, of course, because that's, you know. That's the only surprise the fans really want, and they won't give them that. But uh, what what kind of surprises could they be possibly thinking about? You know, for for doing something uh, doing for something here for Hollywood Bowl. Like I can imagine that whatever the surprises are going to be, it's probably going to cost tens of thousands of dollars to participate in it. You know, or <laughs> it's going to probably be, you know, something that's maybe not so exciting at first, but you know. If you pay so much money to us, you can come backstage and you can meet, you know, whatever, or see this, or we, we're we bringing a traveling museum of stuff, but only for people who spend, you know, $25,000 for an extra, you know, golden ticket. I, I'm very curious to see what it's going to be that, that they're going to try to surprise us with. Now, I'm going to go around the table again, and I'm very curious, what do you think it could be in all seriousness. I mean, I'm try I'm overblowing it a bit here with what I think it could be. But what do you think realistically this kind of surprise could be? Let's try Lonnie first. <laughs> I, 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 I have no answer for what realistically what what kind of surprises it would be, because Mark, like you said, we're not we're not bringing back Ace and Peter. I mean that I I, I think that ship has sailed, and we continue to take. It, all parties can, well, except Peter. Peter Peter takes a high road, and he really just, he doesn't have anything nice to say, so he doesn't say anything at all. But the, the other three, anytime they're they're probed, they, you know, will we'll take a jab at at, an, at, at each other. So I, I, I don't think that all of a sudden, come Hollywood Bowl, we're just going to say, oh, you know what, let's have Ace come up here and let's play Shock Me, and, <laughs> and everything's going to be great. I, I don't think that's happening. You know, all kinds of surprises. I, I, I think you might be on to something, Mark, that maybe we'll have some kind of traveling museum or something like that that you could pay more money for uh, that we'll take out of the Rio in, in Vegas where that Gene Simmons collection is. And mm. you can come spend money and, 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 and see some Kiss product. I really don't know. But all kinds of surprises. I think that's, a, at the end of the day, what I really think it is, I think it's a very misguided tweet um and one that he shouldn't have just sent out there because it just sends the kiss world into a frenzy all kinds of surprises what does that mean mm -hmm. you know what does that what does that mean does that mean realistically does it mean less pods on the stage because every time we <laughs> do shows there's less and less <laughs> pods yeah i mean so, misguided I, really gene is gene very... a misguided tweet i mean I'm, I'm shocked to hear it you know but I mean, maybe the surprise is they're adding back two more pods. Maybe that's the big surprise. We have more no. pods now. You know? If if I so. had to put if I had to put amount if I had to put an amount of money on it, it would be very similar to the show prior to Hollywood Bowl, and very similar to the show after Hollywood Bowl. If I had to put if I had to wager any kind of money on it. Yes, I think that that that's that, that's a pretty. Yeah. Safe bet, in my opinion, if you if you just look at it that way, uh, Mister mm -hmm. Voice of Reason. What 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 are your thoughts on the matter? Yeah, well, I saw that and I thought, oh, what the heck could they be? You know, they try. I thought the first thing that crossed my mind is like, okay, the ticket sales are not good or something like that. I mean, that's what I thought. Um, but it looked like I, I went out and looked. It looked like they sold most of the tickets or a lot of the tickets. So. It may not be that. Uh, the other speculation is it 
could be maybe they will have uh, uh, Bruce there maybe at the end you know like for rock and roll night or something play on stage that's the only other thing because yeah we're not i don't think we're gonna see ace or or peter anytime soon or probably ever uh with gene and paul on stage um so bruce maybe um and maybe or maybe some other you know, something like David Dave Grohl or somebody maybe join them on stage. I mean, that's the only other thing I could think of. Dave you know, Grohl, some other you kind know, of Kiss fan that's a rocker, you know, now and that sort of stuff. You know, you know, Bruce has. If Bruce has been on, you know, cruises in the past few years and things like that, and it and it seems like you know they they still have a a, a decent or, or a good relationship with with Bruce. One would one would imagine, but. Bringing Bruce up on stage at the end of the show, that's but that's gonna fall so far short of the mark. Uh, that's true. Uh, you know, I mean, we're we're talking about. I mean, here, what well, well, they went on here, here, when well, they went on Stern, and they're talking about the final fifty dates. Yeah. Stern didn't go. Oh, Stern didn't start probing him about Bruce Kulick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? You know what I mean? Stern didn't know. Who, Stern probably didn't know who Bruce Kulick is, nor. With a lot of the people in the audience, like, well, who is this guy? Who's the six foot exactly. seven guy? Who's the six foot seven guy up on stage all of a sudden? And no playing? disrespect, I, to Bruce. Yeah, I, I, Bruce. We we sing we, we Bruce. sing Bruce's yeah. praises on this yeah. show a lot. I don't think anyone on this show has ever said a negative thing about Bruce Cooley. No, and I've met Bruce multiple times, and he's been super nice to me every time. Like saw him with Grand Funk. And he saw me in a kiss shirt and like came up to me after the show, even nice. unprovoked to say, Hey, how you doing? Talked with us for a while. Super nice. I have nothing bad to say about him, but I, in this, I think bringing Bruce up for a, for a show like that, or, or even Madison square garden, people are, people are, people are still thinking, Oh, well, if they're ever going to bring Ace and Peter out, it's going to be Madison square garden in New York back where it all started. If you bring Bruce out, that's gonna so that's gonna fall so flat, in my opinion. I could I could totally see it. I can see it now. Paul running up to the mic. All right, people, we got a surprise for you tonight. Please welcome on stage. I remember the family. Bruce Kulick. Cricket, cricket, cricket. Who the hell's that guy? You know that, that that's what's gonna happen. Exactly Bruce? what you said. You know that that I don't think that they would do that. I I hope that they don't. It wouldn't do that. be fair to Bruce. It wouldn't yeah. be fair to Bruce. Mm. Imagine being Bruce then, getting up there and just hearing crickets and or some guy going, "Who's that?" You know, "Who are you?" Like when you love when people do that kind of stuff. You know, "Who, who are you?" You know, uh, but I I can, I can just imagine. I mean, I had I had a feeling initially when what Ken was saying earlier could have been the thing where they were maybe just. Gene was using the hype machine here to maybe try to sell some more tickets. But if Ken's right, if they already have sold decently with tickets on this, then maybe he didn't need doesn't need to do that. Maybe this is some sort of legitimate, you know, surprise for the fans, which they've been promising for who knows how long now. But I guess the only thing that we'll be able to know for certain is what happens when the show happens. So uh, still a ways away. November third. Will something get leaked? as to what it is we i don't know start, we, we will can, see we can start a rumor <clears throat> right now and and you know, spike the sale you know sales of tickets or or recent re- you know the scalping uh and say it's you know taylor swift is going to join them on stage or something like that and that taylor swift uh, that would be a surprise yeah, yeah that, that, that would be a surprise. about two grand a piece yeah <laughs> imagine but anyway <laughs> now speaking of surprises we have one last bit of uh news to tackle here and something that uh lonnie alluded to earlier kiss added a show to the tour surprise surprise you know we, we're only doing 50 shows no we're doing 54 no we're doing 55 no we're doing 54 uh the last show added australia the final curtain October the latest 7th. the latest show added not the last yes. show added. so <laughs> yeah the, 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 the latest show added my excuse me for the little faux pas there uh but australia <laughs> The final curtain. I would like. I love the dramatic use of that. There, the final curtain. Be there, or something terrible is going to happen. You'll never see us again. Which you know. <laughs> whenever I hear this stuff now, I just don't. I don't believe it anymore. They, they've already said these kind of things so many times already. This is it, people. You know. 
even we didn't we talk about this like a few weeks back saying that you know there's still time for kiss to go to australia and to do something and now lo and behold they have a date now in australia the final curtain mm -hmm. call so uh thoughts on this ken what do you think about the final curtain call yeah, in Australia? I thought that was interesting uh, title, the final curtain. And then, and then I started thinking a little while ago. So as you remember that uh, thing in uh, <laughs> The Wizard of Oz, and they they say, uh, you know, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. You know, yeah. and the dog pulls <laughs> yeah. the curtain back, yeah. and you see the the wizard guy there, or supposed but you know, the wizard, yeah. you know, doing the controls. And I said, oh, you know, when, you know, that guy is actually doing the tapes for Paul's vocals back there. Wow! <laughs> wow! There you go. Wow. I said, that's. Yeah. The... <laughs> but anyway, I mean, the final curtain. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a final curtain. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to Australia even after that somewhere in the future for the 50th anniversary or something i don't know maybe they won't uh, but i i think they're still gonna be you know out there um next year or the year after um just to do a few more big big shows now now question because i'm not you know so in on all this little bit of news all this minutia here uh this Australia show is the only show that they're doing on this leg here, or is that, there well, other dates? Gonna yeah, happen? currently it's the only show in Australia. I, I, you know, I would say that if tickets go sell out really quick or something like that, I wouldn't be surprised if they add another date. Mm. Right, depending on you know the. That's a long way for the band to go. To yeah, do, to to bring just to do one that, show, right? All yeah. of that crap down there. It's true. Do one show, pack it all up, and bring it back. Mm -hmm. That's a long way for one show. So I I think you guys you guys could be could be right that we we could be testing the waters here. Let's put it up for one show, and see if it sells out. Then oh, due to popular demand, we're adding <laughs> another show in Australia. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I, I think that that's probably the case because, I mean, you bring up a good point. I mean, logistics are everything. This is where you make or break on a tour. You know, you're carting all this shit over for one one, one show, show in Australia. That, that that doesn't make sense. The only way it would make even remotely any sense is if they added another show or two or if they well, carted it over to Japan, which is relatively close, and did some right. shows there. True. Right? That's possible, too. But what's this venue paying you? I mean, do they yeah. have to be guaranteed a oh, substantial yeah. payday to go all the way down there for one show. Yeah, exactly. Because I remember a very old interview that I saw with Getty Lee of Rush back in the 70s and they were playing a show and they got asked to play a show in England. Their very first show in England. And the, the newscaster guy asked, he goes, you guys are going over to England for one show? And he goes, yep. And he goes, you must be getting paid a lot of money. And he goes, yep, with this huge smile on his face. So obviously, if the money's right, then it, it can make sense to do it, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know... A, are Australians that desperate to see Kiss again one more time? And number two, do you think it just could be a ploy to, you know, to get people that excited to buy tickets in order for them to add more dates? I mean, it could be many things. It's probably a combination of the two. More than yeah. Anything else. yeah. And if it doesn't you sell know. well, maybe they could always just turn around and cancel it. Right, hundred percent. If it doesn't sell yeah, well, they can exactly. just say, "Oh, logistically, it just isn't possible for it to come all the way down." Logistically, exactly. Yeah. That's why we canceled the show. That's why we canceled the first Plymouth. show of the European tour. Yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> logistically, it's not possible. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that was our new segment. It only took us a half an hour to go through it, but that's cool. Uh, so <laughs> let's let's get to our main topics, which are, you know, things from the board, which is our, one of our favorite go-to topics. So let's start off with one that uh, you know our good friend Ken organized for us to talk about in this episode. And the first one that we're going to be chatting about is what is your current go-to Kiss album or the one that seems to find itself in highest rotation? So I'll start this one off because it's funny because uh, of late I haven't been spinning too much Kiss because I've been getting a lot of different stuff in the mail and stuff like that. So I've been listening to a lot of other stuff, but, mm -hmm. but there is been, there has been one kiss record that has been, you know, finding its way on my turntable quite a lot. Uh, and I'm not really sure why that is because it's not 
you know, any particular reason for it. Uh, but that is the best of the solo albums. I hmm. had I have a couple of copies of that album. And uh, I think I was looking through the ones that I had and I left one of the copies out. I believe it was just like the one of the standard ones, the German ones uh, on there. And I, I've been listening to that a lot. And personally, I I do like that record because while I still feel to this day Ace and Paul's are the superior records, the way they organized it this way uh, with a couple of songs from each record, and I think that they were the ones that are, you know, probably the, the, the standout ones from those records. It makes it for a much more enjoyable listen if you want to listen to all the solo records in one shot. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have to go through all the records and pull out four separate albums and listen to it. You can get a good uh, listen of it that way from one LP. So that, that's that been really one of the records that uh, has seen very high rotation on my turntable. And funny, I also have the uh, Japanese CDs that came out not long ago. Remember when they reissued them mm-hmm. the, the, mm-hmm. there? I, and I have that in, I had that in my car for a long time too. Uh, I've, I, again, there's something about the, that solo record configuration hmm. with those songs that I find very enjoyable to listen to. So that's been uh, on my turntable and CD player quite a bit. So what about you, Lonnie? What, what's been on your system? As of late, I've listened to um, more rock and roll over more than late. It's kind of struck a chord with me. Not, not that I dislike the album, but I, um, I mean, I, I love the album, but for some reason I've, I've just been listening to it more than others you know i i listened to a lot of creatures you know back in the fall when that box set came out um you know that was a heavy spin rate that was listening to that and you know the, the killers tracks and things like that and the, and the live stuff but for some reason I've, I've really kind of migrated toward that it's such a cool sounding record and, and it's so different than than the the two albums that it sandwiched in between between Destroyer and and Love Gun because they they really got it so right with that album for how the band should sound on vinyl and then for some reason they mm-hmm. went away from that even when they when they finally had captured it they'd been searching to capture what the band should sound like on vinyl and they finally got it right in in most most Kiss fans opinion and then went a more polished route after that but um, just been listening to that more and more lately. The songs on there are so good. Mm. I mean, they're just it's it, it's very underrated album in my opinion. Even though it gets a lot of high praise, um, but D- Destroyer and and other albums take are, are up on a pedestal, especially in the bands. Yeah, you know, Paul Paul really, you know, Paul Paul did a, an interview not that long ago and said, "Oh, we were um, intimidated. We were." kind of backpedaling when we did rock and roll over because you know this this and that um i, I think yeah. rock and roll over song song wise are just as the song selection is just as strong as destroyer even though destroyer gets uh, you know a lot of the praise you know destroyer you know may not even be the best album released in 1976 and people call it the best kiss album ever it may not even be the best album released that year mm. so um i just i've listened to that um quite a bit They're, they just sound they were just at their peak when when rock and roll over was was being recorded and when they were touring for that album it's, it's so good and it just kind of got on a kick and i haven't been able to get off of it lately i 100 percent agree with you as it is my favorite kiss album of all time uh it is much better than that piece of drivel called destroyer that was before <laughs> it uh and uh yeah I, I i i think you just said the perfect term they got it right with rock and roll over everything about it is perfect the songs you know the sound of it everything is the way it should be that's what i say whenever i say that's how a kiss record should sound like that's what i mean and when i say destroyer doesn't sound like a kiss record it's because they doesn't have that it doesn't have that rawness it doesn't have that feel mm-hmm. too much too much production too much pianos and other bullshit and chimes and christmas bells and all kinds of shit that don't need to be on a kiss song so what about you ken what, what what's been done uh, what's been uh, playing on your uh yeah. system of late well i agree with uh, you know rock and roll over but that's not the one i've been listening to i i don't know i i just find for some reason i i find i go to uh i like to hear a lot of uh lick it up album mm. I, I just love that album 
Um, you know, I, it's, I think obviously the best non makeup album, in my opinion. And uh, I actually, you know, I actually like it better than Creatures of the Night a little bit. Just a little bit better than Creature of the Night. I, I really do. I think it's a, just a solid, super heavy, you know, album. Um, and I like all the songs. I know some people, some people like those Gene songs towards the end. Some people don't, but I, I really do like them. I think they're really, really good. Um, underrated in my opinion, but, you know, I just tend to go back to that album a lot. I don't know what it is, but uh, I really enjoy it. So that's probably the one that's highest on my rotation, at least currently. I mean, that's not a big surprise. I mean, I know from as far back, you know, I first met you, you've always said that Lick It Up has been one of your go-to records and one that you <clears throat> frequent a lot. And whenever we have these kind of, you know, polls or, you know, discussions about favorite records, mm -hmm. Lick It Up always seems to be very high on your uh, list of albums overall. And, and and it is good. I mean, there's there's, there's no question that it's fantastic. I mean, the, the one reason why... I don't like it as much as Creatures. It's just mainly because of the sound. I mean, that's the main thing that I like mm. better about Creatures. It just it has that bombastic drum sound. And, you know, right. I, I wish it, you know, I, if they would have kept that sound for Lick It Up, I bet you I would have loved Lick It, Lick it Up even more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, I could just imagine songs like that, you know, with that. It, it would it would have been very been interesting cool. <laughs> to hear something like that. So um, next up. Is something that that has been talked about a lot. I've noticed this even on Facebook that people have been talking about this because the question that everybody has, well, within the Kiss community, I suppose, uh, that's on their mind is, what's going to be the next box set, right? You know, now that we've gone through the Destroyer one, we've got the Creatures one, we've been all happy campers with that one. You know, what's the next one going to be? And everybody keeps saying, you know, the debut should be the next one, the 50th anniversary of the of the debut Kiss record. So the question is. What would you want from a 50th anniversary debut album <clears throat> box set? Now, you know, usually when you talk about albums like this that are like debuts, they usually have one distinct advantage is that because there's been so much time since it, you know, people have discovered things. People have, you know, gone through their closets, maybe say, hey, I, I can't believe I still have this or I have that and this. And you could usually make a pretty decent sort of box set because there are stuff to kind of get back to and look at and find that, that you could, you know, put in to make a really fantastic box set. So with this question asked, let's go to Ken first. What would you want to see in a 50th anniversary debut box set? Well, a big box. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I've thought about box, this before. Huh? Yeah, we're going to be box. Yeah, I guess you got to put a lot of stuff in there. I think that this is, uh, it should be a, a, a big box with a lot of music on it. I would definitely have some Wicked Lester on there. Mm -hmm. Kind of show where they came, were coming from before that. I wouldn't mind them putting the whole all of the Wicked Lester stuff that they did on there. Just to show uh, where they were at and, and you know where the, what they become or became afterwards uh, with Kiss. Mm -hmm. And then so as far as the Kiss stuff, uh, yeah, I would like other takes. You know, like they've done with some of the other box sets, you know, different takes or, or extended versions. Uh, do they have a let me know version that has the extended? I think they, they I bet you they did record a version of that with the extended let me know uh, mm. chant uh, in that song um, and maybe some other songs. Acrobat, maybe the full acrobat instead of, you know, you have the uh, love theme from Kiss, which was just reduced to a little thing, right? Instrumental. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, alternate takes. And then, as far as, uh, hopefully they put something, they have a real good live soundboard from back then, if possible, would be nice. Um, and then all the other little goodies, you know, like the original poster from the first album that they had in the at the very beginning. I think it was just a promo. So, yeah, um, Peter with that state. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't, I, and I, I, you know, I don't have that poster. I still don't have it. Um, I have a poster of that, a smaller version of that from the, uh, was it Casteria box set? 
um, yeah. that was that was issued then. But yeah, stuff like that. Um, and any other unreleased uh, songs, different songs that they might have recorded. Maybe they used it, waited and used them maybe for Hotter Than Hell or something. And maybe they'd save that for a Hotter Than Hell box. I don't know. But I, I'd love to hear other songs that they may have tried uh, to mm -hmm. do and uh, put that on there too. So yeah, definitely vinyl, vinyl and CD and all that stuff. All that good stuff would be really cool. What about you, Lonnie? You know, I, I think that a 50th anniversary of the original album would actually be a, a very easy box set for them to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously the, the, the one CD is, is the album, you know, remastered, whatever like they've done for the other ones. And then the next CD would have to be to finally put out the Wicked Lester album. I think that it would be the perfect setting to to put that out. I mean, they've they've had it and and have just sat on it for for fifty years to finally just put that out there with those songs, how it was originally intended to be released, the album that they walked away from. Here it is is the perfect setting to put that out. And then the other thing that really belong would belong on there would be those Eddie Kramer demos, the original mm -hmm. demo tape would definitely in in its entirety not a piece of it you know piece of it here and a piece of it here like we've you know gotten over the years with like first kiss last licks and like what we got on on the box set back in 2001 the whole thing all five songs in a row here it is boom and then you know though and then there's other demos like like those those versions of like that version of nothing to lose that came out not that long that leaked not mm -hmm. that long ago yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the perfect setting to mm. put something like that out. Um, you know, there, there's other demos that are on the box set, you know, like that, that version of Firehouse. You know, when you hear them kind of talking and joking around in the back in the background, there's other demos for the for that first for that first album that would be easily but would you know just be easy to put on there. And then, like Ken said, I, you know, you, you top it off with with something, you know, we I mean, I mean, come on, we, we've all heard. Like that, that Daisy show from June of mm -hmm. of seventy four that leaked not that long ago. You know, there's things like that out there that would be perfect to be on there. Something from that original Kiss tour. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'd be a, it's a slam dunk to do for the fiftieth anniversary of, the, of of the album, which would you know be in February of next year. And I think it'd be very easy for them to to compile material to put on there and, yeah. and put it out there. It yeah. makes a lot of sense. I, I agree. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you guys have mentioned that I think would make a lot of sense to do. I mean, lately I've been on kind of a box set kick myself. You know, Rush put out the Signals one. Uh, Merlion have been putting out a lot of these kind of deluxe editions of their albums that I've been getting in on. And I've kind of been thinking about it in the sense that almost I'd like to like to see almost like a hybrid of something like that where they're doing like, you know, put, put you know, put together like a vinyl sized box. Right. You know, do another remastered if you need to do. All right, but definitely do a vinyl press of the Wicked Lester record officially because it's almost like, you know, like Lonnie said, uh, 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 this is where we came from. This is the roots of Kiss here. All right, so have that there, you know. And and even, you know, a lot of box sets now I'm seeing are in the, are including seven inch singles. So why not put in the first couple singles ever released mm. off that record in seven inch form there? People would probably like that too, you know. Uh, and Another thing that some bands are doing, which I think would be really cool to do, is uh, T-shirts. A lot of people put in these T-shirts inside the boxes. Why not do the very first original Kiss design shirt? That sort of the one with the diamonds or the gems there, mm -hmm. the Kiss logo yeah, on there, yeah. just like a real simple shirt to represent the first, you know, sort of T-shirt that they that they did, and you know, put the posters in there. And you know me, I'm a big fan of like video stuff as well. Now back in the day, you know. There probably wasn't as much focus on it back then, but don't forget, a coin was a was a TV guy, and he was a guy who was all about television back in the day. And mm -hmm. as far back as the early rehearsals, he was filming stuff. So who knows what is somewhere in these deep dark vaults? Because we we always said before that oh, we don't know what they have in there, but we're getting surprised. You know, like look at this uh, boot, look at this show that we had with uh, Mark Saint John. Nobody had a clue that it was uh, existed. Who knows what else is there that we don't know about, you know? 
you know, there's always these things that you hear about, like a legendary television performance that they did at some TV show in Canada that's supposed to be like a really, you know, holy grail thing. Who knows? Maybe somebody has that somewhere, you know? Those are the kind of things I'd love to see or like a nicely redone, you know, stepped up version of like the Coventry show, you know, mm-hmm. make it more, you know, 4K-ish or something like that, you know, make it clearer, you know? There, there's a lot of stuff that they can do with these sort of box sets and i i'm all i'm all for that you know uh it definitely you know the, the audio is going to be the thing that's going to definitely do but why not add in some video kiss is such a visual band I'm, I'm so surprised that they haven't included something like that in prior box sets i mean especially creatures of the night they had so many things that they had back then you know that they could have put on some sort of a dvd that they could have included in there mm-hmm. why they didn't i have no idea so, yeah, so 50th anniversary box set was something that's uh, definitely something that I think people are very interested in doing. But I, I'm just curious, before I go on to the next thing here, yeah. what what do you think What do you think realistically the odds are? Do you think it's going to be this album, or do you think they're going to do a different one? Uh, you know, I think it's possible, because I, I, mean, I haven't heard any, any news about any box set uh, going on. Um, though... They're probably working on something, but they're probably being hush hush this time in keeping it quiet. And if it is the first one, 50, you know, 50th anniversary, I would say it's a good reason to be hush hush uh, about it. So I, I would stick with that one probably. And as far as some other stuff in there, yeah, you put in all the goodies still, the press kit and all that stuff. The, maybe the original lips, you know, those yeah, lips, yeah, yeah. kiss lips. <laughs> Yeah. thing uh in there you know a replica of that and you know they can do well obviously they can do all kinds of stuff but uh yeah i i think i think it still might be that to me it makes the most sense to do that one yeah definitely right. lonnie what do you think you know i i think it does make a lot of sense and i and i hope that it happens you know um it has been pretty quiet lately as far mm-hmm. as no no rumblings or rumors of, of anything. Um, we haven't even heard of a, a rumbling or anything about a, the, what the next off the soundboard might be. Um, yeah. That's been mm-hmm. kind of quiet. Usually, usually after the hype of, usually they kind of, after the hype of one dies down after it's released, it's not that long later that, oh, here's the next one, pre-order it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we, we haven't gotten that yet. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm hoping that that that's coming. Um, you know, obviously they're they're I think they're they're focused on. I th- I think the band's focus on the tour, and and getting as much out of this tour. Make a hey, spend your money here, spend your money on concert tickets. Yeah. This year, I think I I <laughs> m- maybe that's the focus this year, and we we come back to to box sets and off the soundboards later. I don't know because it kind of seems like. Um. That's where we're at right now is, oh, spend your money over here on this big shiny object, the tour. And, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll revisit. We, we have all the time in the world to, to get back to box sets and off the soundboards and things like mm-hmm. that. So, so we'll, we'll see because right now it is pretty quiet. Yeah. I mean, the only other one I could think of that maybe could make sense technically is that since it's a, let's say, like the, the debut is considered what, like a 73 year, like 2023. Um, lick it up as an 83 album so maybe they could have done a lick, a lick it up one but i don't think they would do anything from that period yet you know i don't think they would dare go there they're, they're not going to go off they're not going to go non-makeup for these box sets just yet yeah yeah i i i, I think we're going to stick to those oh, classic yeah. makeup albums you know yeah. what i would love to see but it won't happen though either <laughs> is there's a ton of shit for this and it'd be awesome if they did it would be a 20 for if they'll never do this you guys are going to laugh because I'll never do this, which is the 25th anniversary of Psycho Circus. There's all kinds of stuff out there for, the, for songs that they recorded for Psycho Circus <laughs> that, they, you know, I want to rule the world and I am yours. And, <laughs> and you know, there's all those demos that, that, have, that have leaked since then. Yeah. I would love a 25th anniversary Psycho Circus box set. It'll never happen because they were so at odds just when that album proper came out. Can you imagine... Hey, let's put your demos from this on there. Like, no, screw you. You didn't want it on there in the first place. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Um, I'd love for that, but I, I think I'm, I'm really, really reaching there with that. You know what, though? I would buy that box set in a heartbeat if they would have one thing on it. What? I, w- I would buy it if they had performances of the actual band, Peter and Ace, doing those songs. Oh. So we could hear how they were when they played wow. them. And, you know what I mean? Because they, they, Who knows? That maybe they, really did, maybe they did play it. You know? Yeah. Maybe they did play those songs and they did, just Bruce didn't like them, like Bruce Fairburn didn't like the performances. So I'd love to hear those, you know? But who knows if they even did them, right? Probably who knows not. if they even who knows they even exist? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next topic that that's uh interesting one to bring up here is what is your biggest what the moment in history? So uh I'm sure there's quite a few of them that we could think of, you know, that kiss have made us scratch our heads. But uh let, let, let's think of your th- let's think of three biggest ones. Um I'll start with one that came immediately to mind right away was obviously the elder like what 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 was the what was with that you know i mean right away they they came off some albums before that we were kind of you know expecting to hear like dynasty was a record that we kind of you know were a little bit surprised with the with the with the disco wish of i was made for loving you but the rest of it's a rock record pretty much right and if you were to say that you know you're expecting a new kiss record I don't think anybody in their right mind would have expected to hear a sort of concept album, you know, geared toward more, let's say, a Jethro Tull fan than a Kiss fan, <laughs> right? So I think that was definitely a big "what the hell's going on here" moment in history. What about you, Ken? What what's a what's a big moment there? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Though I didn't, I don't know what I thought when I because <laughs> I got it when it came out, and I, I didn't get you know. It wasn't. It was shocking to a degree, but not shocking, I guess, in a way. Um, so, okay, one of mine uh, is uh, when Kiss went to Australia to play for the Sharks. <laughs> minus, minus yeah. Paul, minus, minus Paul. Paul. Paul wasn't That's in there, but and if you watch, if you go out there and, and watch the video of this ridiculous thing they're on a little boat i mean it's not you know you say oh they're going to play on a boat for the sharks and you think okay yeah aircraft carrier you know or whatever it looks like the jaws boat it, it does it looks yeah. like the jaws boat and, yeah. and you're waiting for you know the, the, the jaws theme music to come and jump on the back and grab on gene's bootleg or something but uh uh yeah it's they had the little they're and they're just kind of sailing away and they're playing and he, there's a little smoke, a little bit of smoke coming out, you know, blowing. It's, it's not even a, a great effect. There's no fireworks or anything. It's just, to me, uh, that was probably, again, uh, like we were talking about earlier, a money grab. Um, <laughs> definitely yeah. money grab. And I think Paul didn't want to go to that because he he knew how, he didn't. how stupid <laughs> How stupid it was going to be. And it, it, it was, yeah, it's a what the heck, you know, moment. Um, yeah. So that's definitely. one of mine. Lonnie, what about you? What, what's one for you? <laughs> mine is that god awful monster book. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, mean, I remember when Monster was coming out and I was, you know, real, really, I, I was. I was you know, really excited about the new album, and and I and I, I was at a really good point. I was at a d- different kind of point in my life. Or I was at Monsters coming out, new album. All right, they're going to tour this summer too because they tour they, they, they tour with Motley Crue. All right, I'm going to two shows. I'm going to St. Louis. I'm going to Indianapolis. Okay, then that album is going to come out, and I, you know I got to have money for for that set aside. And then I'm going on the cruise. Mm-hmm. And I went on the cruise that year too in 2012. I mean, I'm spending a lot of money on I spent a lot of money on Kiss that year. And then I'm thinking, okay, and then they're gonna have that book's gonna come out too. So I gotta have some, you know, a little bit of money set aside for that book. And I'm bit. thinking, okay, right. So I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, well, what's that book gonna cost? I'm kind of thinking, mm, two, I could see it maybe two, three hundred range. Yeah. You know, you know, more than what history cost back in the day because of inflation and everything else. History came out in 95, 96. This is 2012. It's probably not going to be $150. Might be around $300, I'm thinking, for this monster book. 
okay, yeah. cool, I'll be ready for that. And then the thing comes, and then they officially <laughs> announce it. And I just, like, just toss my hands up in the air. I'm like, well, nice job. You just alienated about 95% of your fan base. You know, just took one <laughs> look at that and said, well, no, I'm not spending that money on a book that – I don't even know what the hell I do with Jeez. it anyway when I got it. I mean, how many times would you really open it up and look at it? Because it'd be so damn big and so uncomfortable. Cumbersome? Cumbersome to even cumbersome. flip the damn page on it. That You need two people to turn a page. Right. I, 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 need, yeah. I, need to scary hire trainer, so I need to hire a trainer so I could turn the page. God. So... You know, and I was excited about it. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. You know, I, and I thought it, and, and I thought it'd be about the size of history too, yeah. not this ridiculous thing that it was. And then Carl did, and it, like, what are we doing with that? I mean, how misguided was that? Yeah, that was totally ridiculous. And they, they even had the balls to think that you know we're gonna have different countries. Mm. represented yes, on it because we know that many people will be buying this book from different countries i'd be surprised if anybody bought that to book. my knowledge i think uh to my knowledge only one person bought it. I, that's just uh, what i heard uh one person bought it um yeah i saw that thing and actually that's on my list lonnie too that's it's it's just i, I wish they would have yeah, reduced it in size and, and, and sold it for less. That would have been cool. But they, they just really... About the about size of history. Bigger? You know, that'd be fine. Yeah. yeah, you don't need a coffee table. A, size, a coffee table book to be the size of a coffee table. You know, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, bigger <laughs> is not always better. Bigger <laughs> is not always better. I mean, come on And now. it turns into it. It even has a cup holder. Yeah, yeah, they should have. They should have, you know, and... Yes, that's right. You have legs that fold out. But anyway, they... Uh, What's this coffee mug I, on? You saw those pictures? You, you saw those pictures of stacks of the photo of the paper that to assemble all these books. I mean, they have yeah. stacks and spawn stacks of the huge sheets of paper that are oh, already yeah. printed out. And I thought, oh, sh man, what a waste of money. What that, happened that is, to those? They should probably recycle them and make smaller yeah. books you know do yeah. something like that but yeah that that was a yeah wt that would be moment. A, that would be a great idea if they actually did that like what what genius in universal music doesn't you know should come up with it should come up with that idea and say listen guys why don't we take these burn them like recycle them the paper and let's make a regular history sized version of this i think people would definitely buy it yeah I think that that would be a good they idea. They would have made money if they made it smaller. Yep. If they just would have made it a few hundred dollars and yeah. not several thousand dollars. Yeah. People would have bought it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Kiss, kiss. Um, so <laughs> I the, that that wasn't on my list because I totally forgot about that, to be honest. But really, it, it, it should have been a no-brainer. But uh, one of the things that did, did get on my list, though, uh, and this is funny because I was a big fan of of the, the that Scooby Doo release that came out yeah. that they did with them, and I thought it was a great idea. And one one of my younger nephews uh, got into Kiss via that because he was a big Scooby Doo fan. He was a young kid, and he loved it. He loved the whole idea of it. But the one thing that really made me scratch my head was when you heard through the grapevine that they were going to have some new Kiss song that was supposed to be on there and i was thinking to myself okay well great there's gonna be a new what, what could song. this be I, you know i had i really had wasn't really thinking to myself it's gonna be a completely new song i thought it was gonna be like a new version of a kiss song that they were gonna do but to my horror when i heard don't touch my ascot I, I i thought to myself wow like what is this like they had an opportunity to do something where they could have made you know a little three minute song for a cartoon that could have you know, maybe even being a, a, a Kiss song that people would have liked, but they go and do that again. This is something about Kiss I don't understand. The why do they do stupid shit like this? Like, they had a they have a good opportunity to, to even do a redo of one of your other songs, and just you know maybe modernize it or do something to it to make it a little bit cool for the for the cartoon. No, they do a ridiculous song like that. That's a butt end of a joke for that has been for years. You know that song. I mean. 
look at when we did the 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 song shootout just now the battle of the albums right you know, when, whenever we mentioned Don't Touch Your My Ascot, Julian was like going in fits with that. No, that, that song is never going to be used in any of these contests. You know, no, th- that it wasn't even is, up for debate. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's horrific, this song. So that to me is definitely a what the F is going on here moment. So what about you, Ken? What's another one for you? Or if you want to comment on that. Well, yeah, I mean, Don't Touch My Ascot doesn't bother me so much. Um, <laughs> Because wow. when I when they did she that when they did th- that I thought I was thinking back to the it's kind of like a barbershop quartet kind of thing yeah, in, right. in a way right and it made me think back to the Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park where they had the barbershop quartet in there sure. those guys robot robot guys and uh, and I just thought I and I always kind of had a thing barbershop quartets always kind of interested me since I was a kid I was like. You know, it's really interesting it, them singing and harmonizing, and it was just interesting to me. But anyway, uh, I don't have any barbershop quartet albums or anything, but uh, I always found it kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, it, it was kind of a weird pick on, on Scooby Doo. Um, so another one, another thing uh, is back in around 2018, I think it was, uh, and it was. I don't know if it was Rio or somewhere else. Um, Kiss were playing, and and it was the end of probably close to the end of the, the, their tour there. Um, and Paul's voice was was embarrassing. You know, it was embarrassing. It was so bad. And I think we had a podcast shortly after that, and I thought, oh. Uh, this is over. And this is before they decided to, you know, announce their end of the road tour, uh, <laughs> you know, like on uh, one of those shows, like uh, America's Got Talent or something. I don't know what it was. Yeah. But it was before that, and I thought, there's no way, there's no way they're going to sing. It. It's just, I can't even believe they're performing with Paul's voice like that. It, it was, it's, it was gone. It was completely mm-hmm. gone. I said, they got it. There's no way they can tour anymore. I said, there's no way they can do it with his voice as it is. And sure enough, though, they somehow put a tour together. And well, I'm thinking, how are they going to do that? How the heck are they going to fix that? You know, and they fixed it. With, There's you know, always a the, fix. The tape. There was a fix. The fix sure was enough, in. And that, and that, and that was the only way it was going to happen. This <laughs> tour that's been going on the last three, four years, whatever. Now, um, <laughs> which you know, again, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the tour. I enjoyed the show. Um, but man, it's 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 misleading out there to some of those, you know, yeah. the the non fans or what do you want to call it, the casual fans. Um, but yeah, after seeing that, it's like. It's, I just thought, how are they going to do that? You know, what the what the heck? How are they going to do that with Paul's voice? There's no way he can sing. No way. I think it's going to be so embarrassing. Um, but they they find you know found their way around it, and uh, and and so years later now it's still working. So that was kind yeah. of a what the heck you know moment for me. I, like, I do remember why? that. That that as well. That was an issue of great contention on the podcast when that happened, and we were discussing it and saying we were we were calling the end very soon when that came out. It would have been you, the I end mean, otherwise. Claudia, you must yeah. have remembered that too. Yeah, yeah. Because they they said no tapes. We will not do tapes. We no, will not, yeah. yeah. So we will not. They were the band that always bashed people doing things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Here we are. Yeah. So Lonnie, what's another one of yours? Um. Mine was, we've talked, we, we, we've touched on this a bunch, but after the reunion tour, that why didn't a live four mm. come out immediately after the reunion tour or during the reunion tour? Even if it just came out like the, the start of 90s, like the early, in like the spring of 97, instead of putting out Greatest Kiss in yeah. the spring of 97. Why didn't a live four come out? Um, you had you could have, you could have cherry picked performances from all the shows that they did in North America and Europe in the fall of '96 and put together a nice 
package of a live four to I mean, a nice product to put out there to drive the Lost Cities tour and to drive the second half of that tour. And to really just showcase how great the band sounded at the beginning of the reunion tour. They Not only were they back, but they sounded good too. No, they didn't sound like the band of, they didn't sound like the revenge line of, of Kiss, but they they sounded very acceptable and they were yeah. very good. Those, I mean, you listen to those reunion shows in comparison to the Psycho Circus tour or the Farewell tour, there's really no comparison. They sounded, yeah. they sounded good on the reunion tour. You know, they really, truly did. And you put that in the studio and kind of enhance it a little bit. They could have sounded great on an Alive 4 yeah. um, that could have came out in the spring of 97. Mm-hmm. The fact that we had to wait until last year when the Donington album came out to get any kind of mm-hmm. official release of the reunion tour yeah. is still mind-boggling to this day, as, especially as popular as they were. I think people forget how popular they were in 96 and 97 they were the biggest band out there yeah. and they were selling out arenas in minutes they were taylor swift in 96 97 yeah. they were the hottest ticket out there and yeah. why they didn't capitalize on a live record for the band that's known for their live performances they put out greatest kiss and what's the best thing on greatest kiss what's the best thing on greatest kiss <laughs> The live version is shouted out loud. <laughs> yeah, it's so ridiculous. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you, but you made a good point though, there, Lonnie, because I remember that Forbes magazine had Kiss on the front cover oh, yeah, at that yeah. time because they were the they were making that much money. Weekly. Yeah, and they're on the cover of Entertainment Weekly. They're on cover of Forbes. They Everything. were the hottest thing out there. Oh yeah, and there was all kinds of articles about just t- everything from right down to talking to each member down to talking to their tech team about how they did the stage everything with their people wanted to know everything about that tour because it was such a popular tour mm-hmm. you know so it, it does make no sense at all in fact you know the more you think about it it makes perfect sense because it's kiss we're talking about that they didn't do <laughs> uh, a, a record uh, at, after that you know tour because it's very clear that they videotaped a lot of it because there's so many leaked you know concerts that are out there to see so obviously they have they could they could have had audio no problem from that and made a record so that's a that's a really excellent uh point and one to bring up so my my last one that i'm going to bring up is one that some people may argue with me that's not it what the what the fuck moment but to me it'll always be because the, this this to, this to me kind of rubbed me the wrong way when i when i heard about this mm-hmm. um and i'll i'll preface this by saying Ken brought up that show with Paul, with his voice and how it was shot. And there's no way they're going to be able to continue with Paul's voice the way it is, you know, and, and our good friend, Ken here, the voice of reason, the man who holds on to hope that there would be a new kiss album one day coming out, Mm. you know, and it, it hasn't come out, but then one day we got this message and the kiss world was on its edge of its seat when we hear that there is new music coming out from Paul Stanley and yeah. we find out that he's releasing a soul album called Soul Station and man when i heard that this was coming out i was like what the fuck is this really all this time you have thousands of kiss fans busting your balls for new kiss material and you you don't want to do that but you want to do this you know and this really rubbed me the wrong way because you know let, let's put it this way rock music you know if you if, you know it, it could be raw it could be very you know pitchy you could be a flat on the note here and there and you can get away with it but soul music is very you know that has a preciseness to it it has a, a sense of very strong melody to it and just my envisioning paul stanley in a studio trying to sing a soul song I was like, man, they they must they must have had that auto tune going over time to do that album because man, if he couldn't sing some of these rock tunes decently, how's he gonna sing one of these songs decently well? And and to me, it was just a real big sticking point. Not so much maybe because it was a soul album, but more because you know you have a whole legion of people who want to hear a Kiss record, and you come back and insult us and bring out a soul fucking record. You know that that to me is just I wasn't cool with that comments. Yeah, that 
uh, I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, but the only way he could get away with singing that was falsetto. I mean, that's that's the only... That voice he still has, and it still mm-hmm. works uh, somehow, you know. Um, but when he's in his normal voice, it, it, it just, uh, that won't work anymore. So he can only really sing falsetto, in my opinion, or else he'd have to sing in a real lower, lower voice somehow mm-hmm. to like Barry Whiter, you know, pretty much talking kind mm-hmm. of voice, I, I would say, um, in order to pull anything off at this point. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that was the only way he could do it. Yeah. For a year, he says, well, it doesn't make sense because, uh, you know, records don't sell music, you know, <laughs> buying music or whatever. It's it's that that business is over and all that kind of stuff. But then again, he, then he goes ahead and puts this out. But I can understand if he's doing it for himself, but it's not going to sell like a, a, a new Kiss Who album. Who bought that besides the Uber Kiss fans? Who bought that? No, I didn't not, buy it. <laughs> not even the casual, the casual Kiss fan didn't buy that. Maybe a fan of a, some other Kiss. artist that. Oh, so it oh. had to be an Uber fan from <laughs> another artist that he covered. That's really. It's like yeah. you know buying a cover like us buying a a Kiss covers album. Yeah. Right. That right. kind of thing would be the only way. Nobody bought. Otherwise. It. Yeah. So what about you, Ken? What's what's your final uh, what the hell moment? <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure there's there's many more, but you know, Lonnie and I matched on the on the uh, the monster monster yeah. book. We both had brought that up. I, I know there's probably other things out there. I, I can't think of them right now, but uh, I'm sure there's plenty uh, of things. All right. Uh, but uh, I can't think of any right now other than that. So. Do you have a last one, Lonnie, or did you? Did I I have one more, <laughs> um, and it's not really a moment. But it's just a what the fuck fact no. that okay. after 19, from 1998 mm-hmm. to 2023, they put out two studio albums and it goes back, mm-hmm. it, it goes back to the, you know, the soul station thing. Like for the last no. almost half of their career, we've gotten two albums or oh, three, right? Oh, you're not counting Psycho Circus? From 99. From 99. On. Oh, 99. Okay, I thought you said 98. So, All right. so for the last 24 99. years. 99. Yeah, I know. It's so pitiful. So for the last, we're, we're talking about a band celebrating its 50th anniversary. So for the last 24 years, we've gotten two studio albums. That's pitiful. And That's, you see all these other bands out there still putting you know music out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is ridiculous because, I mean, like I was like I was gonna say before, like yes, the band I follow quite a bit. They've released they've released two studio albums now in like two years, like one back to back, one year, the next year, and now they're doing a third one that's supposed to come out later, either this year or in early next year. I mean, and this is a band that's already celebrated their 50th anniversary a while back already. Yeah. So I like there's there's really no excuse. I mean, one of the comments I'll never forget, and not that he's some genius who needs to be put up in some great light but nikki six always said that you know musicians are artists and artists need to do their art and make their music you know i mean that's always the thing that made me question those guys is because if you're really a musician that you write music you know i mean you can't tell me that those guys couldn't come up with another album's worth of music there's no way i mean gene says that he has like a fucking catalog of like 200 songs they could have picked from and i'm sure paul could come up with like two or three songs you right. know come on so I, I agree. That's a totally a WTF fact brought to you by Lonnie. <laughs> All right. Brought to so you by we, Lonnie. Wow. What are we at here? We are, we are over our usual <laughs> one hour uh, time limit, but uh, we'll, let, let's, let's do uh, one more and then we'll call it a wrap up. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that is a very interesting one here that I was curious to get your guys' opinion on is if any member of KISS had left the band and joined another established band, what sort of matchups immediately come to mind? So, um, th- this is interesting because if, if you were to think about uh, the, the guys in the band, like, for example, Paul and Gene, if they were to leave, you know, they would have to, I think they would never accept a position lower than a lead vocal position spot. 
especially Paul. So mm, yeah, if yeah. he was to go to another band, you know, it, it would have to be a situation where their front man is no longer able to do it and he would step in and do it, you know. But, you know, th- th- that that would have had to be in Paul in his good days. I mean, that would have had to be back in the late 80s for him to do something like that. But I mean, I, I can't I can't see the problem with this question for me is I'm so ingrained with those guys being in Kiss. I can't imagine them doing anything else but mm-hmm. Kiss. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why even when you hear them doing these covers, like you know, when we were talking about those covers they did, like the uh, Venus and Mars and the Ramones yeah. covers, so that I I have a, such a hard time believing them doing these things because I'm just all I hear from them when I see them is Kiss. You know. So, uh, what was... for, for, I'm trying to think of even one band, and I'm having such a hard time yeah. thinking of a situation. What, what, what about you guys? I couldn't think learn? of any other band, but the thing is, the only thing that comes to mind for me is it would have to be, and it probably for, goes for Paul and Gene, um, definitely, um, is they'd have to be in an all-star band. Uh, mm-hmm. And kind of like what, remember Gene had that uh, all-star band? That did right. that. Oh yeah, yeah. Titans of Rock or whatever well, they. It, well, yeah, he went South back to. The, he went to the revenge look on it and there and all that. That's the only way I think any of those guys could be in another band because otherwise they'd want to be in charge of the darn thing, and I don't think that would go over too well. I mean, definitely Paul would want to be in full charge of whatever it is. So I don't think yeah. he could just step in another band and. I, it would be too, too much friction, I think. No, I, I don't think that, that they could have stepped into a band. You think about, well, bands that lost their... I, I agree with Mark that, that Paul Stanley would have to be the lead singer in any kind of band that he would join. Okay, so so what would have been available? I mean, let, let's not just go completely crazy, but like, what what, what band would needed a lead singer? ACDC? <laughs> ACDC, no, that ain't happening. Okay. You know? <laughs> Queen, Queen, could Paul have joined Queen and become the new Freddie Mercury? Could Paul have joined yeah. Journey and become the new Steve Perry or something like that? Mm. But yeah. the problem with those ideas is what Ken said. And that is, well, if he joined this band, well, he's not going to be the one in charge. And Paul yeah. Stanley is not going to go to a situation mm-hmm. where he's not going to be the guy calling the shots. So I do agree that the only way here, what did Ozzy didn't leave Black Sabbath and join another band. Ozzy went solo. Yeah. And I think that's the only way it could have worked. Is if if Paul Stanley would have, like in 1984, 1985, I've had enough with Gene and this Hollywood nonsense. Yeah. He couldn't say, I'm going to go join Journey. He he would have joined, he would have created the Paul Stanley band. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and you think about some other... uh... Also, I mean, like this as an example, you got guys like uh, Traveling Wilburys, right? They mm-hmm. all joined up. Great, you know, George Harrison, we're talking, right? Mm-hmm. Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, Bob Dylan, Jeff Lynne. They formed and did two albums of, of music, and, and that's the kind of thing, you know, chemistry and yeah. stuff and they all checked their egos kind of at the door they all knew they were the stars in their own right you can't yeah. kind of say oh i'm, like well, I'm gonna get more like a... this than you i'm gonna see all these songs you know or whatever but but a lot of a lot of those bands like that like like damn yankees that was another yeah, yeah damn yankees is another one and like velvet revolver was an example of that too mm-hmm. and audio slave was was like that too with with chris right. Brunel and it was a rage against the machine but I think there's there's too many at the end of the day there's too many egos involved these guys are all well-established guys and i'm used to calling the shots where i'm coming from but but you know what that you brought up a great point though there what what's all that whatever all those bands have in common though that you just mentioned there they were not band they were not situations of a band where somebody was joining an established band these were all right. newly Super created bands guys came together. yeah 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 that, that so Formed that new maybe band. paul could have done or maybe Gene could have done. They could have maybe made a band like that. They could have made their own uh, whatever audio slave or whatever Super type yeah. of band. Yeah, right. and because because when you look back at the other members of Kiss, for example, Eric Singer, he was with Alice Cooper. You know, he was a Black Sabbath, so he was able to do that because he's a he's a guy who's used to you know being in that position where he's a session guy or he's a yeah. hired gun, right? Same with Bruce Kulick. Look at he's in Grand Funk, right? 
Yeah. And he's had a lo- pretty long career with them, you know. So, mm-hmm. you know, th- th- that that I could see. But again, I think the answer to this question is, I don't think they could have joined any established band. I think they would have had to make their own band and make a new sort yeah. of band for that to work. Yep, yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think that takes us right to the end of the show. Uh, we had some great chat again. And uh, again, please leave your comments. Uh, let us know what you think about this stuff. What do you think about our comments about the 50th anniversary? What are some of your what the hell moments for Kiss that uh, you want to bring up? Leave it in the comments, of course. And uh, I'm sure that uh, next week we'll be back with more stuff again. I'm sure Julian will be probably back with us again. And until then, uh, on behalf of myself, on behalf of Lonnie, and on behalf of Ken, we will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.